We're excited to have you back for another exciting exploration into the intriguing realm of anesthetic advancements on this week's episode of Optimal Anesthesia. Today, we'll be discussing a vital component of GI endoscopic anesthesia. New technologies in airway management are influencing how we think about and achieve procedural and patient success. We will look at the several options for airway management that are influencing the future of gastrointestinal endoscopy. The problem of hypoxemia has become more difficult to manage as the use of propofol sedation during gastrointestinal endoscopy rises. Safeguarding patients is more important than ever since conventional techniques, such as using a regular nasal cannula, are being superseded. In light of these changes, we will be discussing the latest and greatest airway tools today. First off, what's the buzz about using HFNC in GI endoscopy without the traditional tube? Picture this, the oxygen flow starts at a gentle 4 liters per minute and gradually ramps up to 15 liters per minute. But why? Well, it turns out, this technique works wonders when you've prepped the lungs with a blast of pure oxygen hitting that 100% saturation mark with a snug face mask. Now, who's the star candidate for this method? HFNC in tubeless anesthesia is like a superhero for patients undergoing routine or advanced GI procedures without the need for a pesky endotracheal tube. It's especially superhero-worthy for those with sleep apnea, obesity, COPD, pulmonary fibrosis, and folks gearing up for those marathon endoscopic sessions. Let's break down the perks, shall we? Number one on the list, prolonged safe apnea time. HFNC gives you the green light for extended procedures without the hassle of intubation. Say goodbye to dead space, HFNC minimizes it, making your anesthesia game more efficient. And here's a cool bonus, a positive airway pressure effect. This means less work for your lungs, making life easier, especially for those with tricky alveolar filling diseases. But, like any superhero, HFNC has its kryptonite. Watch out for potential side effects, from aching noses to dry throats, headaches, and even barotrauma, that's a risk of things like pneumothorax and subcutaneous emphysema. And speaking of risks, let's not forget the financial battleground. The cost of these nifty HFNC devices might make your budget raise an eyebrow, especially with the ever-changing landscape of insurance payments. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, study limitations. While some studies swear by HFNC's effectiveness, others throw shade on methodology and ethical concerns. It's like a heated debate on the delayed intervention during desaturation. But fear not, dear listeners, because despite these concerns, HFNC stands tall as a beacon of hope in certain patient scenarios and procedural contexts. In conclusion, HFNC in tubeless anesthesia for GI endoscopy isn't just a mouthful of acronyms, it's a game changer. From extending safe apnea time to reducing dead space and giving a breath of fresh air with positive pressure, HFNC proves it's more than just a passing trend. We have Gaudra's Bite Block. While not yet on the market, this innovative design combines a face mask and airway within the endoscopy bite block. Imagine delivering 100% oxygen directly to the laryngeal inlet, potentially offering continuous positive airway pressure CPAP, and minimizing anatomical dead space. Connected to a Maple Sun breathing system, it even allows for controlled positive pressure ventilation. However, its availability for clinical use is still pending. Now, let's talk about bite blocks currently making waves. First on the list is the Respa Oxygen Delivery Bite Block. This recent addition to the endoscopy family tackles the challenge of securing nasal cannulas during procedures. While studies are pending, it presents a practical solution for oxygen cannula placement and retention during upper GI endoscopy under sedation. Next up, we have OxyShield. 
OxyShield is another endoscopic bite block designed to ensure constant and guaranteed supplemental oxygen delivery. Although the effectiveness in reducing hypoxemia hasn't been extensively studied, these devices seamlessly integrate oxygen supplementation without significant practice changes. Promising tools for tubeless anesthesia in GI endoscopy, indeed. These modified bite blocks are showcasing innovative approaches to oxygen delivery, potentially enhancing the efficacy of tubeless anesthesia in GI endoscopy. While we await further research to establish their effectiveness and safety, these devices offer practical solutions for oxygen supplementation during procedures without significant procedural adaptations. Let's talk about the procedural oxygen mask, or as it's affectionately known, the POM. Picture this, a superhero for your airways during GI endoscopy. The POM elevates oxygen concentration at the laryngeal inlet, ensuring a breath of fresh air for patients. What's cool about it? Well, it's got a self-sealing central aperture for the endoscope and even a little opening for gas sampling tubing. It's like the Swiss Army knife of oxygen delivery during procedures. But hold on, we've got more masks in the airway arsenal. First in our lineup are the Dias and VBM endoscopic masks, a dynamic duo designed to take upper GI endoscopy and bronchoscopy to the next level. Picture this, face masks with intubation ports, bringing positive pressure ventilation to the scene. Sounds like something out of a medical thriller, right? But, as with any thrilling plot, there's a twist. These masks, while brimming with potential, have their complexities and might not be the perfect fit for patients dealing with airway challenges, much like trying to solve a puzzle with missing pieces. Now, let's turn our attention to the marvel that is the endoscopic nasal mask. It's not your average mask, it's a symphony of design featuring a soft cushion, nasal aperture, and a flexible connector. This mask is the VIP guest, offering multifunctionality and delivering oxygen through positive pressure. But, like a high-stakes card game, it requires a skilled player, successful application demands a level of expertise that sets it apart from the rest. Time for a quick pros and cons rundown. On the bright side, these advanced face masks are like the rock stars of GI endoscopy. They step up the game, providing positive pressure ventilation and contributing to improved oxygenation. The Dias and VBM masks, in particular, are equipped for blockbuster moments, but their complexity might be a stumbling block for some patients. The endoscopic nasal mask, on the other hand, is the James Bond of masks sophisticated, suave, but requiring a certain level of finesse. Let's kick things off with a simple yet powerful tool, the nasopharyngeal airway. Picture this, a decade of success at the hospital. Following meticulous preoxygenation and propofol administration, this airway device takes center stage. Connected to a maple sun breathing system, it delivers high concentration oxygen, acting like a superhero against hypoxemia. Versatile and effective across various patients and procedures, it's a game changer in tubeless anesthesia. But wait, there's more. Enter the way nasal jet tube, a device with not one, not two, but two additional channels for jet ventilation and gas sampling. In clinical trials, it showed promise in reducing hypoxia during propofol sedated upper GI endoscopies. Experimental yet innovative, this technique might just be the alternative we've been waiting for in advanced procedures. Now, let's talk about the gastrolaryngeal tube. Designed for deep sedation or general anesthesia during GI endoscopy, it provides a dedicated channel for endoscope insertion. Sounds great, right? Well, there's a catch, complications like sore throat and mucosal erosion have been reported. Balancing benefits and risks is key, especially when general anesthesia is on the table. And here comes the LMA Gastro Airway, stealing the spotlight with its dual-channel design. 
Need pulmonary ventilation and gastroscope insertion? This device has got you covered. But hold on, it requires deep general anesthesia for placement. Initial studies affirm its safety and effectiveness, particularly in low-risk patients undergoing diagnostic upper GI endoscopy. From the simplicity of nasopharyngeal airways to the complexity of dual-channel devices, each brings something unique to the table. Striking a balance between pushing boundaries and ensuring safety is the name of the game, guiding the evolution of tubeless anesthesia in GI endoscopy. GI endoscopy, a potent diagnostic and therapeutic tool, occasionally demands more than conscious sedation alone. Let's navigate through the scenarios where endotracheal intubation becomes a critical consideration. Imagine complex and prolonged procedures that extend beyond the typical duration manageable under conscious sedation. In such cases, endotracheal intubation becomes the go-to solution, ensuring a secure airway throughout the extended procedure and minimizing the risk of respiratory compromise. Now, what about patients with high anesthetic risk? Those with severe cardiopulmonary diseases or compromised respiratory function greatly benefit from endotracheal intubation. It provides controlled ventilation, reducing the risks associated with their existing medical conditions. Moving on to challenging situations with uncooperative or agitated patients. When patients can't tolerate the procedure under conscious sedation alone, endotracheal intubation becomes the safety net. It prevents sudden movements and ensures the safety of both the patient and the endoscopist. And what if we find ourselves in the midst of an emergency? Time is of the essence, especially in cases like acute upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Endotracheal intubation facilitates rapid intervention and resuscitation without the constraints of conscious sedation, ensuring immediate control of the airway. Let's talk about the heightened risk of aspiration. When is intubation the way to go? In cases where there's an increased risk of aspiration due to the procedure or the patient's medical history, intubation provides a definitive barrier against pulmonary complications. It's a safeguard, essentially. Lastly, let's touch on interventional endoscopy, procedures like ERCP or EUS. In these intricate maneuvers, maintaining optimal conditions for the endoscopist is key. Intubation ensures a secured airway, allowing them to perform these complex interventions with precision and safety. Thank you for having me. To improve patient care during GI endoscopy, anesthesiologists must keep up with the latest developments in the field and incorporate them into their practice. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Optimal Anesthesia. Don't miss out on more stimulating conversations on cutting-edge developments in healthcare technology. I'm going to leave you with that thought until we meet again.